All right, so welcome to the second video on the Cham I uh, N720 or 720N, something like that. The link will be in the description. It'll be fine. Um, this is the part where I'm going to actually do um, some basically more advanced feature testing uh, and setup uh, of the camera, run it through a little bit of a color test, and most importantly, uh, check out that AI auto tracking. Now, something to note. I went through the user manual. Nothing in here tells you how the AI auto tracking works. But as it happens, it's pretty simple. Uh, and I didn't actually even need the instructions. So I guess that's OK. Um, frankly, there's buttons on the remote that just sort of make the whole thing happen. So we'll go over that um, in a minute. But first, let's just do a couple zoom and color tests, because that's what I like to do. All right, so I got my camera set up here, and I'm just going to be controlling it with the remote. Um, this is not a great environment, really, um, and I do it in here on purpose because, frankly, it's not a great environment, and a lot of environments you're going to record and broadcast in are not great. Um, but it's a similar environment. Um, I control all the lighting in here, uh, so it's a similar environment I've used for all of them. So I've got my standard uh, color test thing out here in front of me. So we're going to just test a nice little slow zoom push in um, on it. So this is the slow zoom on the remote. And as you can see, that actually worked pretty well. I'd say it kept its focus um, throughout. Sometimes on these cheaper cameras, that can be uh, a challenge is it actually challenges making, keeping its focus while it's zooming. Uh, but this one really uh, seems to have done uh, a good job with that. Again, this, this test card is designed to be kind of a torture test card with all kinds of different things going on it. So let's go ahead, a little bit of flickering there, not too bad, uh, again, for what it's doing. Took a second to adjust its max zoom, which again, you would expect to find. Um, but you know, that card is about 15 feet uh, across the room and I can read every single letter on there. Uh, that is just the power of optical zoom. Uh, so it says this is a 20X zoom. It is 20X optical zooms. I can see the little lenses in there moving. Uh, this is what you wanna see. And I would say uh, the color separation looks good. Uh, the patterns look good. Uh, the zoom looks good. Um, overall, really pleased uh, with the optical performance on this camera. All right, well, here's the part where we're going to test the AI auto tracking features uh, on this camera. And one, you get to see a wonderful little uh, behind the scenes of my studio, which is a bit of a mess. Um, and I'm going to regret the fact that I decided to wear shorts today, but we're all just going to have to live with that. Um, I'm actually going to control the auto tracking through the uh, remote. Actually, the controls are right there on these colored buttons. Right now, the camera is in its home position. So this is where it just is when it turns on. Um, and you're given a few different options for tracking, basically either um, single person tracking or multi person tracking. And there's also a demo mode. And I didn't know what that did. Um, but it's actually really cool uh, for helping kind of not only demo, but also set up and maybe debug. Uh, and I'll show you how that works in a second. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna put it on single tracking. So now you can see, there it is, um, it's tracking me, and that red box around it is the demo mode. And I can hit the demo mode button and turn, um, you know, and turn the box off. So when I'm broadcasting, obviously I don't want to see that red box, um, but if I need it, I can go back to demo mode and turn it on, and that will show me what it is that it is AI tracking, in this case, me, in my little red box. And if I move closer to the camera, you can see that it does, in fact, tilted itself up to and kind of zoom out a little bit uh, to continue to track me. And if I back up, still tracking. Again, remember you can turn that red box if you don't want it, but for testing it's nice to have. Still tracking, still tracking, panning down. And there we go. Finally decided to kick in a zoom and tilt it around a little bit. So it really seems to try to keep like this part of you in the frame. Uh, it does offer quite a bit of headroom um, above you uh, in its tracking. And I don't find anywhere in the settings where you can kind of control how much headroom is, you know, above you. 
But since these systems were originally designed for like and tend to be used in like classroom settings, you know, there's a good chance you actually don't want to cut off the top of a whiteboard um, or something. So you'll have to decide if this is like to your liking, um, having this much uh, headspace above you. But this is about where it tries uh, to keep it. Uh, but if I move, you can see it does a pretty good job um, of, you know, hunting around for me without going extreme. Like it'll let me go move a little bit before it starts waggling the camera, um, which is nice because you don't really want to be moving the camera all of the time uh, if you don't want to. Uh, but, you know, it gives me a little bit of grace before it kicks in. And then there he goes. Does a really good job keeping me in the center. And I'm going to walk towards it. Yep, I can even watch the lenses move. That's so cool. Zoom back out till I'm about, I don't know, a couple feet from it. And here we are. So that's the auto tracking on the Cam I uh, PTZ camera. And I'm gonna say for what it is, that actually works pretty darn well. All right, so let's take a little look-see um, at the back-end uh, setup of the system. So all I did was type in the IP address that's conveniently flashing on the front of the camera into my browser, use the standard admin, that's the username, admin is the password. If you're gonna deploy a camera production, please, please change at least the password so you don't have weird people jumping on your network, finding your cameras and changing your settings. It's happened, I promise. Okay, um, so here we get the standard kind of back end. I think I've seen this a dozen times now, uh, but you got your live and then you've got all of your video formats and you can see it defaults to dial priority. Uh, that's that dial on the back that I showed you earlier um, in the first video. Uh, but of course you can change things around um, if you would like. Um, you know, your image setup. This is a nice one. I kind of like where they've gone to this kind of tabbed thing. So they're definitely using the uh, newer version of this backend software, uh, which is nice, gives you a few more options on uh, how to do things. A lot of times the defaults on this are gonna work fine, um, or really you're going to control them through uh, your controller um, if it has the ability to adjust these things. That's a nicer way to do it. Um, audio, if you're gonna use it, most of the time you're not, but you can. Um, basically sitting set up. There is a firmware update available um, for this from the chami.net website. So do uh, consider downloading that and putting that in there. Um, if you want to have a dedicated IP address or change your network settings, of course, you can do that as well. Uh, most of the time you are going to want to do that. Um, Interestingly, NDI comes, but it comes turned off, uh, which is a choice, I guess. Um, most of the time it's not. So if you are looking for uh, NDI, then uh, just know that it's not, it comes defaulted to off. Um, so you're going to need to come in here and turn it on um, if you actually you know, want to use that. Uh, basic information on what's going on, all the pan, tilt, zoom kind of control features um, for it. Uh, and then all the way down here uh, is where you finally get the addition of the AI mode options. Um, and this is where you can do a single track, uh, tracking a single person, turn that on. Um, a frame track, which is actually done for tracking multiple people if you've got several presenters up front. Um, and then demo mode, which actually puts uh, a red box uh, around the person. Uh, so you can see what it is trying to track uh, as it goes along. Good for demonstrations and also for debugging, not something you're going to want um, in on in on production uh, by any means, but it's there if you want. But you know, as I showed you earlier, uh, much better off actually just using the remote uh, to control those. All right, so that's the new Cham I PTZ camera. Um, I almost stop accepting reviews for these kind of cameras because I've just done so many of them and they really start to look the same. Uh, but we really are also seem to be entering a time where they're getting some decent improvement. It's small things, but it's actually really, really helpful things. So if you are just getting in uh, to the PTZ space and just looking to having one for some or whatever reason you need one, especially if it's for a classroom or, you know, government or, you know, church or, you know, things like that where we're doing a lot of live streaming and continue to do a lot of live streaming. Um, this one's going to be a pretty strong recommendation from me as a great place to start because unlike some of the cameras that were on the market, you know, two, three years ago, uh, they've really listened to their users and fixed a lot of the problems with the user experience, especially the user setup experience that used to be such a massive chore and pain in the rear. 
But this one, actually pretty straightforward. And, you know, I showed you the web back end, but truthfully, I don't know that you'd ever actually need to get in there um, unless you really wanted to do something specific because between the on-screen, the actual embedded screen, the on-screen controls, um, and just kind of how it comes out of the box, it really is sort of ready to run. I'm interested in how it looks um, hooked up to its controller uh, that is also from the same manufacturer. We'll be interested to see um, how they did that integration, so look for that um, video coming soon. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed uh, this. If you found it useful, please let me know. If you have any questions um, or comments, let me know that too. Or if there's anything in the future you'd like me to test or take a look at, uh, I always interested in that input as well. And until I see you again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions and the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.